Good morning, Red Lions Senior High. I'm George. Today is March 3rd, Cycle Day 3. Welcome to RLA TV's Thursday Takeover. Let's begin with information for seniors. If you are interested in learning about an apprenticeship opportunity at Garrity Glass, along with a field trip tour, please email or stop by the Career Center to talk with Mrs. Morris. If you want to play games for fun and exciting competition, then eSports is the place for you. Dude, dude, right, that's fine. That was good pump fake. We're fine. We're fine. We got control of the game. We just gotta keep scoring. Oh my oh Timmy. Oh, oh, hold on. I'm here. Got you. Got you. Parker. Clef the god. Looking, firing for the end zone, and it's picked off. And no one's gonna. On you, Arla. In the center. Down two. Center. Oh. Talk to Mr. Ziegler in room B-308 if this interests you. Now to Aldi with school news. Thanks, George. In school news, several students here at Red Lion had their artwork showcased in the New York College's 2021 and 2022 Y case, Art Walk. The art show was launched virtually on February 17, 2022. Winners will be announced tonight in a live-streamed event on the York College of Pennsylvania website. Participating students are eligible for cash rewards and gift certificates to downtown York art venues. One student will receive a $20,000 Delhi Carpini Community Arts Scholarship to study an arts-related field at work college. The Adams Family Musical opening night will be today at 7 p.m. They will also be performing March 4th and 5th at 7 p.m. and March 6th at 2 p.m. This reinterpretation of the Adams family centers on the lives of the group as they navigate a new chapter, one where Wednesday Adams is all grown up and has fallen in love with a normal man. The family is forced to keep secrets, for better or for worse. Get your tickets now on the Senior High website. In b room B104, the Future Business Leaders of America is opening a snack shop. It will be open all periods during the school day except for B lunch and ninth period. You must pay in cash at the time of purchase while also respecting the school rules of not being late to class or disturbing nearby classes in session. And now, on a bittersweet note, Officer Greenlee announced this week that he is retiring. Let's go to George for a chat with Officer Greenlee. Good morning, Red Lion. My name is George Keen, and today I'm sitting down with Officer Greenlee, who is retiring as a school resource officer. How are you this morning? I'm fine, thanks. How long have you been a Red Lion? Uh, well, I've been a police officer since 1993, and I was assigned here at Red Lion in 2005. Wow, a long time. What has been your favorite experience at this school? Oh, my goodness. Uh, in 17 years, there's too many to count. I, I enjoy the everyday of it and in interacting with the kids, and I got to be friends with a lot of teachers and uh, administrators over the years, um, some that have gone on to retirement, and uh, the administrators, and some that are still here. What lessons have you learned from Red Lion? Uh, kids are kids. Uh, there's a certain amount of, uh, and I don't mean this in a bad way, there's a certain amount of stupidity that goes along with being a kid, and um, that's a good thing. You're supposed to learn, and I feel like as a police officer here at the school, I didn't take things too seriously, I didn't um, go heavy-handed with the kids, and uh, you know, it's all about learning, and uh, I think they learned how to interact with law enforcement um, in the 17 years I've been here. Will you miss the Red Lion School community? Absolutely. Uh, fortunately, though, I'm not totally disconnected. I live like three blocks from here, and my daughter is in uh, ninth grade, and my son's in sixth, so I'm still connected. I don't uh, foresee them uh, not graduating from Red Lion, both of them, so I'll, I'll be around. What are your future plans? Um, I'm starting a position with uh, Capitol Police in Harrisburg at the Capitol Complex. Uh, that starts on the 14th. So. Uh, I'll still be a police officer at the state level now. Um, I'm not sure for how many more years. I'm, I'm getting old, and uh, while I always planned on retiring early, uh, I always planned on having a, 
a new job and a new career, so I'm off to that. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Uh, just that I really had a, an enjoyable 17 years here. I don't think I ever didn't look forward to coming to work. Um, it's been fantastic. I, I, it's sad to leave, but it's, it's time, time to go. Thank you so much for taking the time for this interview, and thank you for all that you've done for the school. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a great day, Red Lion. Now on to world news and this day in history with Max. Thanks, Ollie. Did you know that on this day in history, the Star Spangled Banner was officially adopted as the national anthem of the United States? The anthem originated from a poem written by Francis Scott Key on September 14, 1814, after witnessing the bombardment of Fort McHenry by British Royal Navy forces during the War of 1812. Key was inspired by the U.S. flag flying above the fort after the United States victory. Prior to being made the national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner was recognized for use both by the United States Navy and U.S. President Woodrow Wilson. Finally, on March 3, 1931, Congressional Resolution made it the national anthem and cemented its legacy as the national anthem we know today. But let's talk about what's happening around the world right now. As Russia continues to invade Ukraine, destroying several cities, women and children are being evacuated from their homes and sent to surrounding countries. Men and boys over the age of 18 are being held in Ukraine in case there's need for soldiers. As of now, several countries around the world have opened up their borders to the Ukrainian refugees, regardless of the visa status. Putin's nuclear forces are on high alert, while the world is carefully considering how to defuse the situation and punish Putin for his actions. I'm Max with your world news and a lesson in history today. Now Kevin with sports. Thanks, Max. At the NBA trade deadline, the Sixers made a big move, sending Ben Simmons to the Nets for James Harden along with other assets. Harden recovered from his nagging injury, and he made his debut last Friday against the Timberwolves. In the game, Harden and Joel Embiid proved to be a force in their first game. Harden would put up 27 points, 8 rebounds, and 12 assists, along with Embiid contributing 34 points and 10 rebounds. They'd win the game undisputedly and then go on to play the Knicks. In the game, they both put up just as outstanding numbers. Things are starting to heat up now since the NFL season is over. Teams are already preparing for the 2022-2023 season to try and chip away for the Super Bowl trophy. There have already been rumors about trades and valuable free agent moves for certain NFL players. Some notable trade rumors include the Seattle Seahawks trading QB Russell Wilson to the Philadelphia Eagles, the San Francisco 49ers trading QB Jimmy Garoppolo to the Washington Commanders, and the Green Bay Packers trading QB Aaron Rodgers to the Denver Broncos. In addition, some very highly notable players that are still available to grab are wide receiver Devontae Adams, outside linebacker Vaughn Miller, free safety Tyron Matthew, wide receiver Chris Godwin, and more. This has been your sports update. Now back to George. Thanks for joining us here at RLA TV. I'm George. Stay safe, Red Lion.